So one of the easiest ways to start creating some sounds is to use one of the many synths that Tone.js has to offer. We can start with what I think is one of the simpler ones, and that's simply called Synth. You'll see it over here on the left side of the docs, along with some other synth types like the AM synth, Duo synth, FM synth, and so on. There's really a lot to explore and discover here. Now, if you're already familiar with the underlying Web Audio API, you'll know that you can build up these synths by individually piecing all of the separate building blocks together, one by one. With Tone.js, however, the synthesizers assemble these building blocks together for us, which makes it a lot easier to start getting usable sounds right away. If we take a look at the documentation for the synth, for example, we can see that it's composed of an oscillator, and that oscillator gets routed through an amplitude envelope. The oscillator is the component that generates the sound, and the amplitude envelope is a component that shapes the sound. Oh, snap! Now, you'll see here on the screen that I have my browser open on the left. I also have my console open. And then I have a basic bare bones index.html file, just with the script tag for the CDN for Tone.js, and then followed by a script tag to our very own app.js file. Now, we want to start working with that basic tone synth. So, in order to do that, we're going to come into app.js. And we want to create a new instance of the tone.synth. So we're going to do new tone.synth, followed by parentheses. And let's create a variable to hold this instance. We can just call it synth. And now that we have a synth, what we need to do is we need to connect it to our speakers so that when we play the synth, we can actually hear its output. In order to do that, we can come after the parentheses and we can use the to destination method. And now we basically have our synth hooked up and ready to go. Now the thing is, we actually need a way to play or trigger a note from the synth. And there are various ways that we can do this. For example, we could set up our computer keyboard to allow us to play the notes. Or we could set up an actual MIDI keyboard and we can trigger the notes via MIDI. But for the sake of this video, we're going to trigger the notes programmatically. And we can do that by using a method called trigger attack release. So we can say synth dot trigger attack release, and this is going to take two arguments. The first one is going to be the name of the note along with its octave. This is the note that we want to play with the synth. And the second argument is going to be the duration of the note or how long the note will be held for once it gets triggered. So for example, for that first argument, let's say I passed in a C3. Well, C is the name of the pitch and 3 represents the octave that that pitch is going to be played in. All right, so you could do C2, C3, C4, C5, or whatever. The second argument, as we mentioned, is going to be the duration of the note, how long it's held for. So we'll do 8n. 8n is short for an eighth note. And there are other values we can use, like we could do 4n, that would be a quarter note, or 16n for a sixteenth note. And there's many other ways to input the values here but we'll leave it at 8n for now, for an eighth note. Now, before we actually hear the sound that we're creating, there is an extra step that we need to take. And this step is necessary due to what's called the autoplay policy. And this is a policy that's implemented by browsers. Basically, browsers don't want websites to start playing sounds automatically when a user visits the page. Because, as you can imagine, this could create a bad user experience. Instead, the requirement is that the user must interact with the page in some way to start the audio. In a way, it's sort of like they need to provide a consent for the audio to play. So now, by default, the audio context for a page is in what's called a suspended state. And you can see that if we log out tone.context.state. Let's go ahead and do that. And here you can see that we see the word suspended. So what we need to do is we need to respond to a user interaction that changes the suspended state to a running state. Let's learn how to do that. In our HTML, let's go ahead and let's set up a button. Let's give this button an ID. Let's call it play-btn for play button. And some text content, we'll just say play. And there you can see the button in the browser. And now, in our JavaScript file, at the very top, I'm going to get a reference to that play button and save it to a variable. So I'll say play btn equals document, we can use get element by ID, 
in get the play dash btn. Okay, now that we have that, why don't we close out our index.html file so we can zoom in a little bit here. And what we're going to do on that play btn is we're going to add an event listener. And this event listener is going to listen for a click event type. And then in our callback function, this is where we're going to check the state of the audio context. So let's say if tone.context.state doesn't equal running, well then we can call tone.start to put it into that running state. And then let's go ahead and let's take this line 4 and move the synth.triggerAttackRelease inside of the event listener. And now, hopefully, when we hit the play button, we should hear this note, this C3. And we do. And at this point, you can experiment with the values you pass in to trigger attack release. Like, for example, let's put this up an octave. Let's change the 3 to a 4. And let's also, instead of making this an eighth note, let's make the note hold for a little bit longer. Let's make it a half note. And now let's play and hopefully you can hear the difference there. So that's basically like the hello world of tone.js. We set up a simple tone.synth and we triggered a note with it using trigger attack release. And we also checked to make sure that our audio context was in a running state. And if it wasn't, we called tone.start to put it into that running state.